Okay, so I'm just prepping right now for tomorrow's coil replacement. What we have here is a coil out of a Perlic behind the bar bottle cooler. Unfortunately, my customer is not using it as a bar cooler, but is actually using it as a regular refrigerator, which technically these weren't really designed for. Um, just because they're so long, they were more designed for bottles where the bottles will cool each other. Uh, down the whole line because they're pretty much touching everything's back together again, but he already knows that already explained and what we have is we have a leak in the system now Where the leak is I'm 90% positive. Uh, I can't confirm it with bubbles But my leak detector goes off like crazy when I get anywhere near the evaporator coil the reason why I can't 100% confirm it is because this coil is literally mounted inset in a little box you can't see the back of it I can feel it with my hand and I could actually stick my phone up above and use the camera to look behind it um, but my my electronic leak detector is going off like crazy and I don't I can't 100% confirm that the leak is in the coil per se I'm more leaning toward the picture and hopefully it'll come in on camera Okay, I'll try putting this up on the screen, but my uh, my my computer and iPhone really don't like each other. But this is the suction lines behind it, and it is 100% green and pitted. And I'm almost positive that it's leaking more from that piece of copper tubing there, right here, where these pits are, than it is the coil. But the problem is, is this the coil has to come out to get behind it anyway. So there's no way I'm going to rip this entire unit apart and not replace the coil, which really isn't that expensive considering the labor involved. There's no way I'm going to try unbrazing everything and cutting everything. You can't even cut anything because you can't even get anything back here. It's just absolutely amazing how tight this is. So what we're going to, what that means is we have to replace that section, the suction line behind the coil here. And we also have to replace the cap tube, which is also connected there because I have to cut those to actually physically get the coil up. It's just, it's ridiculous. Um, so you can see here are two entrances. Uh, cap tubes on the bottom on this one and suction's on the top, which is a little bit different from the norm, but um, that's the way it is. So what I have right here in the back here is a piece bent to be able to Go down the side right here so we can solder this piece in place here and I got a couple of fittings I needed to use two fittings I couldn't bend it with a pipe bender because I can't go beyond this flange here so I needed a, uh, a, uh, a short street 90 and a long street 90 gives me the perfect spot to be able to get this in and I had about an inch from the end of the coil to the pipe feeling with my finger and there's still a little bit of space back here, but I don't want to try to bend that and, you know, get it in place. So either way, this works. And what we're going to do when we get there is we're going to cut the refrigerant lines from the compressor, which is actually below this evaporator. We're going to pull the evaporator out and I'm going to feed the long section. I'm going to leave it really long for now. We're going to feed that down the hole behind it along with the cap tube. So that's the plan. So for the time being here, we are going to get this all connected. So I do have to clean it out. And yes, I'm going to use Stay Bright. I know a lot of people don't like it. it. Works for me. If it doesn't work for you, then don't use it. But it's going to work perfectly fine for me. And perfect fine for this application. Okay, so I just had that propped up so this is relatively level. And another good thing about using Stay Bright here is I'm not burning off all this paint. This paint here is actually protecting the coil and uh, stopping that oxidization that you saw. Not too critical if this was a regular bottle cooler, but in a region where they're putting produce in it, kind of is a big deal. Actually, before I do that, I have a smoke detector above my workbench. I need to shut that off.
let that solidify and then I'm gonna just gonna take a wet rag once that's cooled off and I'm gonna wipe it down that'll get all the flux off and stop that from turning green okay so now we got to replace the cap tube so I'm using replacement cap tube and the way we size these is it comes with a little chart inside and you need to know your compressor horsepower in your application which in this case uh, you need to know your compressor horsepower your application uh, medium low or high temp and your refrigerant used and whether it's single feed double feed uh, in other words whether it has one two three or four cap tubes feeding the evaporator so we have single feed so we're gonna go to single feed and we are using 134A so we're gonna go to the 134A block our compressor horsepower is gonna be a third horse so he is third horsepower right here and our application this is a medium temp unit refrigeration it's a regular refrigerator so we're gonna go down to medium temp third horse it needs 79 inches of number two and these are numbered one through five on the box so I'm gonna cut myself a length of 79 inches and I'll just show you how we cut this real quick or how I cut it the book way when I was in high school and we used the book um, it said to use a triangular file nobody ever does that also be sure that you cut off an end of the piece no matter what because it's usually I don't know if the camera will pick that up it's kind of oblong it's not exactly full there easiest way to do it use a pair of wire strippers uh, dykes or limans and all you do is pick an appropriate gauge alright so I slip through that but I don't slip through this one so we're gonna use that and we're gonna not clamp down on it we're just gonna gently put some pressure on there give it a twist a couple times and all that's gonna do it's gonna make a mark I'm gonna grab our plier end I'm gonna grab the piece and we're gonna twist up and down a couple times and it snaps right on that score line and it shouldn't be squished at all I don't know if you guys camera will pick that up but that's perfect so what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna off camera measure myself out that 79 inch piece and cut it okay so here's how we're gonna install this into this big pipe this is the one of the very few places that you're gonna do the uh, crimp and braise method on this case crimp and solder so what you do is uh, just like with another one of your appendages pinch an inch okay off the end of this just like that clean up to that point so I'm gonna clean the cap tube up to that point all right so you see we're clean here we're dirty there reason being is we're going to be using soft solder and it's going to want to flow wherever it's clean so by having a dirty spot here solder isn't going to want to go down that far and clog that tiny little hole if you want to be doubly sure what you can do too is take a little bit of refrigerant oil dab it on the end there's no way you're ever going to get solder in there so we're going to put a tiny amount let me get actually a pair of limons real quick because we're going to need those and put a tiny amount of flux on here on our cleaned off spot okay just like so nice little coat and we're going to insert this into the tube up until that clean point so right about there we're about halfway into our clean area and we're going to try to get this honking thing in here and what we're going to do this copper is super super thin let me see if i can get a uh, let me get a needle nose in there okay get some smaller needle nose in here and we're going to crimp this flat what you can also do here too 
is you could have put in a piece of copper in there and crimped that piece of copper, but we're just doing it like this. This is usually what they always do at the factory when they do these. Just like so. There it is. I'm going to make sure that this outside area here is clean. Put a tiny dab of flux on the outside edge. And to make doubly sure that our solder isn't going to track in. We're going to point it downhill. And that's it right there. Okay, so there's our joint. And let me see if I can kind of get your angle correctly. A little bit more here. All right, we're sealed upper and lower. There's no way there's a leak there. It, it, this does take some practice because it's more like it's more gap filling. Um, but I mean, with, with a little bit of practice, you can do it. And some people don't prefer this method. Uh, some people like to braze everything. By all means, do what you guys, what you feel you need to do. This method works for me, and I haven't had an issue with it. Now we can be pretty workmanlike, and our suction line goes into, uh, go, and our unit goes straight down a hole right about here. So all this here is exposed. So now what we're going to do is just take our cap tube here. And we're going to follow our suction line to about there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of sand cloth and from here over, we're going to try to do just one side. And then our cap tube on the back side. We're also going to clean. And we're just going to give a little, littlest coat flux on our suction line. And now we're going to attach our cap tube to our suction line that will kind of act as a heat exchanger. Okay, got a couple little clamps there. Solder. There she is. Okay, so just to show you that joint.
again now and soldered the cap tube to the suction line about to where it penetrates in. Now when we get in the unit I'm not going to be able to get it any further just because it's so far into the unit. Uh, it's going to be a pain in the butt for me just to even be able to cut and coupling this but we'll be able to do it. Uh, so it, it doesn't have to be pretty. I mean you don't even have to do this what a lot of people do, which is perfectly acceptable, is you can uh, silver tape. Just take a piece of silver tape and tape that to that or even a uh, zip ties in a few spots. But like I said, we had easy access to this. It's on my bench. It's at my house. Might as well uh, do it like this. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get some paper and I'm going to cover this coil and I'm going to paint these lines. The reason why I'm painting the lines is just to give them a little bit of protection um, considering what the ones that are going to be coming out look like. I want to give the copper a little bit of protection against oxidization. Um, the Putting a piece of arm flex all over that is not going to protect it against oxidization. Even the paint won't completely protect it, um, but it'll give it a fighting chance at least. I think the only paint I have down here is black, so um, I'll just wrap this coil up real real quick and some tape and some paper and just give that a quick spray. Okay, I actually did find some uh, gray paint. I just decanted a little bit of it and uh, went over that copper pipe. I'll, I mean, I'll be honest with you, this really isn't something that you would do in the field just because you're not going to have time to do it. But since we're doing this tomorrow and this is going to sit overnight here at my house, take me two seconds. Might as well just do that, give it a little bit of protection and maybe it'll last a little bit longer. Now, 50-50 shot of that, but we'll see. But either way, this is going to get completed tomorrow. Alright, so you see how jammed that coil is in there? There's no room to get it out on either side. The figure lines are behind it, so that's why we're going to have to cut it. And the plan is to cut it back there or cut it underneath, pull the lines up. That whole there's a hole in the bottom left where the lines go in and our condensing unit is living right here. And I cut the suction line back there where it penetrates through that little hole and we're going to cut and coupling it. And then our cap tube and dryer are going to be coming down to here. And that is the plan so I'm actually going to get to that because I actually got to get it done so I can't film everything, but we'll do the steps. All right, let's see if we can get this out. I'm going to take off this whole, this whole uh, insulation on it. It should slide through it. I'm just trying to get this. To... There's so many things in the way here. There's wires in the way. There's... Uh, uh. I'm stuck. <laughs> Can you kind of feed that tube up, like straighten it out of the hair? I know, I know it's all the way in the back. So you can see how they did it. They just put a piece of 3 8 up and coupled it here. There's a leak though. I must guarantee you that's where it was leaking. Because the coil itself doesn't look ridiculously bad, but I mean you'd have to heat that up and try to get this piece out and put a new piece in. You're going to do more damage than anything else. So let's, let's get the whole new one. Uh, 
Uh, so I'm gonna measure this out, and we'll see if we can feed our new piece down. All right, let's try to get this in. I'm gonna feed the cap tube down here first. Uh, don't worry about it. We can feed it back up when we're done. All right, so. All right, keep pulling a little bit. A little tug, little tug, little tug. All right, I'm gonna start to get the three eighths in there. So I'm gonna have to put a, kind of a, yeah, I'm gonna have to put a little bit of a curve on this to come through the hole. <clears throat> And then we can straighten it out when we get it. Well, it's going to be curved down there anyway because it's going to go into that coil. But right. All right. I want to pull that cap tube. Put a little bit of tension on there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. All right. Hang on. You should see the three eighths. Yep. Yeah, see it? Okay. Yeah, Hang on. All right. All right. So of course, they put a rubber grommet in my damn way. Hey, yeah, we'll get we'll get that back in after. But there's a stupid electrical grommet right here, which is in my way. <laughs> like why? Because they want to make your life harder. Yeah, pretty much. All right, let me get up and over this. All right, I'm behind it. baby make the turn all right hang on hang on man i think i, I think it's because i'm cockeyed <laughs> there it is almost like i know what i'm doing all right we are good so uh let me get this thing mounted with the four screws yep. and then we can uh cut what we gotta cut back there Okay, so there's a new line back there. And I also found, you see the rust spots on the top of the capacitor here and on that cord. That's because the penetration there wasn't sealed, so I took some perma gum. It was actually there, it just it fell off, so I just squished it in there, actually from the top and the bottom, sealed up that penetration, so that'll hopefully stop this from happening. So now we just gotta connect this with a coupling to that and then take our cap tube and attach that to our new dryer. All right, we're connected in all the way back there. Probably can't see it very well, but uh, you can see how far back that is in that big old pile of electrical there. So this is another spot where stay bright saves your ass. Uh, if you try to braze that, I mean, you could probably get it, but your chances of burning a lot of things back there is pretty high. And uh, so this is a hell of a lot easier. And then our cap tube is in, cap tube and dryer. And we'll just follow this along with our little spring as we push it back. So right now we're going to vacuum it, and then we can charge it and see what happens. We're all back together again. We're at 49 degrees from 82 and still going down. So still got a decent amount of space cool off but everything is running doing what it's supposed to be doing now we're done I have no idea where we're going next but we'll find out 